Well, they were talking about a Christmas checklist. Now, some people can go through life with no checklist. They just kind of like float through life, flitter through life, however you want to say it. I've got to have a checklist, and, and I'm sure many of you do as well, especially this time of year with so many things going on. You don't want to forget anything. So how, when we have a checklist, okay, and maybe you've done this before, you've made your checklist, okay, I'm going to be super organized. This is my New Year's resolution, right? So I make a checklist, and then uh, you lose it the next day, or you never go back to reference it. But you've got your checklist. How do we decide um, what to do first on that checklist? Well, I've kind of come up with three different uh, character, characteristics that we would use to decide what to do first. One of them is the importance, of course. Uh, what is absolutely most important on this checklist? Well, that's getting moved up to the top. Here's another factor to consider. Time. How much time is it going to take? How much time do I have left? Okay, company's going to be here in five minutes. Honey, don't worry about painting the bedroom. Just forget about it, all right? Uh, so time is another factor to consider. Now, here's a third factor. W something that only you can do. You can't delegate it to someone else. Those three factors will take items and move them up to the top of the list. So what is on your Christmas list this year? Of course, there's presents that we've got to buy. I don't know too many people that have all presents bought already. Guys, you're running out of time. Just saying, okay? Uh, so make sure you get your presents. That's obviously on the list. Who's left? What am I going to buy for them? Um, and then, of course, there's food. If you're responsible for putting food together for family gatherings, uh, you've got the grocery list. You've got to figure out when you're going to go buy that food, too. So that's on the, the checklist. Um, and then there's house cleaning. If you've got people coming to your house, that's the house has to be cleaned, right? And this would be maybe something for us guys. If people are coming to your house, there's those little things in the house that you should have fixed earlier in the year and you hadn't gotten to yet. Okay, that's on the list too. Well, let me shift gears a little bit here. God gave a gift, Jesus, and he gave that gift not so we could have Christmas and crazy checklists but so that we could have forgiveness. In order to get that forgiveness, that gift, we have to receive it, all right? It's just a choice we make. Um, anyone wants to give me a gift, <laughs> I'm taking it. No hassles at all, okay? Especially if it only has two wheels. I'm all over that, and many of you know that, okay? Um, but in order to get a gift, Someone has to give it, and the other person has to choose to receive that gift. Let's consider that, let's, let's put that thought into our checklist and the three um, factors we use to determine the priority of things. Um, how about that first one, importance? When it comes to accepting that gift of forgiveness that God gave us, just how important is that, really? Uh, some people may go through their whole lives and not give God a single thought. How important should it be? The Bible tells us, God tells us, in fact, Jesus told us in the book of John, when we are born, we are condemned already. That's, that's an important truth from God that we need to consider. It's not when we're born, if we do enough bad things, then we're condemned. God says when you're born, we're condemned already. So we're already in that state. God is offering us that gift of forgiveness. We have to choose to accept it. Second factor for uh, the priority of our checklist was that of time. Do you remember that one? So how much time do we have? The Bible says, boast not thyself of tomorrow, thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. None of us knows what's going to happen tomorrow, or even tonight for that matter. 
And many times when it comes to uh, religion, God, that kind of stuff, people are tempted to just put it off. Put it off till tomorrow. I'll think about that later. Jesus said, boast not of tomorrow. We don't know if we have it. So the element of time now moves that decision that we need to make, moves it up higher on the priority list. And then there's that third one, what only you can do. This is something that we can't delegate to anyone else. Me getting God's forgiveness and being allowed to enter heaven when my life ends here, I cannot delegate that to anyone. After I'm gone, I can't hope that they do enough good things to get me into heaven. It's something that only I can do. Those three things should move this decision to the very top of our priority list, our checklist. The first thing, what will you do with Jesus in the area of importance, time, and something that only you can do, my friend, that pushes it right to the top. It's a decision that God gives to each one of us to accept his forgiveness. Now, if someone were to offer me a Harley tonight, I'm stuck on that, sorry. <laughs> And I said, well, I don't know. Let me think about it. And I walked out. What did I just say to that person? It wasn't a yes. It was a no. Saying we just want to think about it, I'm not ready yet. No, we're not saying yes. We're actually saying no to the gift that God has provided for us, that gift of forgiveness. My friend, I hope you've accepted that gift. If you haven't, tonight you have that decision to make. I hope it's at the top of your priority list. Maybe when you leave here, if not even here tonight before you leave, I hope you might talk with me or, or whoever brought you or something and ask them to explain all this to you. But perhaps when you leave here tonight, uh, whatever family member invited you to be here tonight, that you would sit down with them and say, hey, how can I get this gift?